One of the main kinds of problems that we can solve using momentum is collisions. So first of all, what does a physicist mean when they talk about a collisions? Um, well, essentially, if you have some timeline like this, um, a collision is something that takes place over a really short amount of time. Okay, so there's a very clear um, time before the collision, and there's a clear time after, but then the during part is short. All right, so it's just short compared to that overall time. And the reason that it's really nice to consider interactions that look like this, where there's a before and then a really short interaction and then an after, is because if that time is short, then when we calculate the impulse, which remember is equal to the integral of the net force dt, well, um, the net force is uh, maybe big. There could be lots of forces going on at any given time, but if the time interval is short enough, then this is going to be approximately zero. Okay, and that's the assumption that we want to make in a collision. If we have some long-term interaction where they're like really, you know, doing a lot of things and exerting forces on each other, then we can't make this assumption. But as long as the interaction time is short, we can use this approximation. Okay, so why do we care? Well, we have conservation laws. So conservation laws tell us that the before and after are the same. And so for instance, with momentum, the momentum before equals the momentum after. Okay? So we don't need to know what's going on during the collision. We don't need to know the forces. We don't need to figure out accelerations. Um, as you know, that's a pain having to, to deal with forces and accelerations. Those are not easy problems. But if we can ignore all of that and just know that something before and after are equal, maybe we can solve the problem just based on that. Okay, um, so what are some examples of collisions from a physicist's point of view? Um, well, sort of the standard thing that everyone thinks of for collisions is billiard balls. Um, or as we more often call them, pool balls. Um, essentially, a ball hits another ball and they bounce apart, um, and that's a collision. Um, similarly, cars have you know collisions. Um, they hit each other and then whatever happens afterwards. Um, another one that is interesting is atomic collisions. Um, so this could either be in just a gas or um, in, for instance, the Large Hadron Collider, we can have um, protons hitting each other. Um, in some of the other large atomic colliders, we have um, larger atoms hitting each other. Um, one that is, um, I think, particularly interesting is we have space probes that fly by planets. So essentially, um, we can do what's called a gravitational slingshot, and when a probe goes near a planet, there's some gravitational interaction, um, which can sometimes speed up the probe dramatically. Um, it can also change the direction, um, but that interaction is really short. So the probe probably only spends um, a few minutes um, to less than an hour near that planet, but while it is um, traveling, it's going for you know years potentially. So that's a really short um, collision compared to um, the the other sorts that that we've looked at. Um, and again, even though they don't actually touch each other, that's not a requirement for a collision. Um, all we want is for the interaction to be short. So according to a physicist, um, when a probe flies near a planet, that counts as a collision. Um, another one is um, galactic collisions. So you may or may not know that at this very moment, the Andromeda galaxy is hurtling towards the Milky Way um, and only to, to collide in the near future. Uh, the near future is you know, maybe 5 billion years from now. So this is a really long-term thing and not something to, to worry about in your everyday life. Um, but from a, phys from a physicist's point of view, that counts as a collision. It takes a long time to get here. Eventually, the Andromeda galaxy will pass by. Um, and in between, the interaction time will be relatively short compared to those time frames. Okay, so what are the time frames? Well, um, when two billiard balls collide, that might be a collision of, um, oh, I don't know, maybe a millisecond. Um, so pretty short, um, faster than we can see with our eyes. Um, atomic collisions are even shorter. So those might be nanoseconds or picoseconds, depending on exactly what's going on. Um, probe flybys, those might last several minutes, um, probably less than an hour. Um, and then galactic collisions, those might last, say, a million years. Um, so uh, a mega year is what we call those. Um, but even that is short compared to the billions of years that they're hurtling towards each other and then um, separating afterwards. So it's not about the amount of time specifically that um, determines whether it's a collision or not. It's the um, fact that we have a clear before, during, and after, and the during part is short.